we, we wanted to have a discussion here about um, this exhibition and how it came about. And I think the place to start is with you and your mm -hmm. inspiration to create this body of work. So I wanted to create a body of work that was a collision of my past career and my current career, which is uh, architecture into quilting. So quilting for me is an architecture, but there's a whole different vernacular to it. Because a lot of architecture, in the traditional sense of the word, is uh, inhabitable structures, and I think quilting has that same thing. The scale of material is just very different. So I wanted to speak to that with a body of work as well as understand quilting through the mind of a designer. So taking a lot of the um, boundaries of quilting and bringing it into a very narrow focus and then making uh, an extended series of that so I could understand where some of these visual vernaculars come from and this history of something that I don't know as much about. I wanted to learn some of that just through my own practice. So deciding to make 50 quilts that are iterations of the same block have a design challenge to them as well as a intentionality that gives the viewer a sense of what I've done on purpose because you can see throughout the series because they're all log cabins okay well he did log cabins on purpose and they're all the same size okay he did that size on purpose and so certain things that you see repeated all the way through you get to say okay that was the rule and then what is the variation that's happened mm -hmm. so I was able to make 50 variations of the front of a quilt mm -hmm. of the patterning of the piecing in within these very strict constraints one of the challenges I gave myself in the, in the parameters is it's entirely made out of sourced, used textiles. The fronts are everything, pants, shirts, hmm. towels, uh, table runners, anything that I could find. They're all sourced from Goodwill and I would go buy hundreds of pounds at a time, take it back to my studio, cut it into strips and use those strips as my stash to create all of the pieces from. And so for me that allows uh, a really interesting design conversation between me and the existing materiality that I can just source. So I didn't go out and say I need stripes, I went out and said I need things that are black. And if there is a pattern on it, great. If there's not a pattern on it, great. If it's fluffy, great. If it's something that quilters don't like, great. You know, there's a whole range of things. Some of them were easy, some of them were terrible. And then what happens is there's this beautiful modeling uh, of textures and tones that happen within each of the colors. Mm -hmm. So my rules were I could only use red centers for the block so you can find where each block is in each of these quilts so that you could start to work backwards. If you don't know the block type or if you're a quilter interested in the methodology, you could find the red centers and then black and white fabric to create the block. That's my rule. Uh, and then the backs are all sheets. So it's this great conversation of the textures <clears throat> that people use in their own private home with the things that are kind of necessarily behind closed doors. And you had some thoughts about how you would like these to be displayed at the yeah. International Quilt Studies Center and Museum. Tell us what you told us a few Sure, ago. sure. And so one of the reasons I wanted them to be displayed in a non-traditional way is the things that I've been learning from having made the body the body of work. So I have been working on photographing these quilts and photographing any of my quilts for years and I find there's a frustrating duality to quilts as an object. You either hang it on the wall and treat it like a painting and then you get a very flat image which can be very beautiful but you lose some of the three-dimensionality, some of the sculptural qualities. So I wanted to help use this exhibition as a conversation to suggest that quilts are sculptural objects. They are in architecture, they're habitable, there's surface, there's a depth, there's a function to them. Mm -hmm. And so by not hanging them either on the wall or on a bed, which is your other option, you have a third sort of center point where they are inhabiting space draped over armatures, but they're not uh, on a wall so that they're not treated as a painting. So we do have one special quilt that's very different from others and it is displayed in a very unique way. It's draped on a mannequin. Yeah, so there is the extra quilt, I guess the 51st quilt of this exhibition, which is draped on a mannequin. It's not displayed in the way uh, that the rest of them are on these armatures and there's a lot of reasons for that. So I made an extra quilt that has embroidered on it the name of every person that helped me create this exhibition from people who helped me piece or sew or quilt or ship or or uh, market or in the whole gauntlet of, of the things it takes. I mean there's there's 56 names so it's important to say that I didn't do this by myself in a garage. It certainly was a, a labor of love for a group of people. And so every one of those names is embroidered on that quilt, which is then draped around a mannequin, kind of alluding to the way that I take a quilt with me wherever I travel, that I really do think they are 
inhabitable architectural objects. We went to the design table to figure out how to make this into an exhibition. And Eduardo is the lead designer. So I'd like you to talk a bit about how you went from loose concepts to um, a three-dimensional installation. Well, it started with me just kind of getting in the headspace of who Luke is. Um, you know, I've, I've never met him before, and I've heard so many things from so many different people. I've looked at a couple things of his work, and so it kind of, that was my, my start of everything. And after having our discussion over the phone and, you know, discussing a couple concerns and kind of saying, this is the direction I want to go for, um, that, that's when I started kind of going into my more design space, background in fashion design kind of helped me say, you know what, let's, let's venture down that path. We can, you know, dresses come from fabric, which is two dimensional. And the fact that we can create these magnificent walking art pieces for the body, what's to say we can't do that with quilt? So with Eddie's uh, sketches in the 3D program of these towers, 12 feet tall, I had to figure out how to build them so they wouldn't fall over and crush people. And we worked with a volunteer who loves, he says he likes to MacGyver things. So we sourced all the materials and built them. And we discovered when we were starting to stack them that we, we were able to experiment with different angles of where we placed one on top of each other, somewhat differently than what you had planned originally, Eduardo. But it ended up creating new opportunities for the way the pieces could be draped and hung. Yeah, so, that's great. As a museum, too, we have to think about conservation issues uh, so that we don't damage the pieces. So hidden from view are the little things that, from touching the, the metal so there's no corrosion that might transfer to the quilt. Mm -hmm. And we light it with uh, uh, conservation levels of lighting. So we did the museum thing. Mm -hmm. We honored what you wanted for your exhibition. And yeah, it's uh, a really great, it's a really great exhibition. Would you show us your shirt? Yeah, absolutely. Woo! <laughs> now, did you make the, did you just piece all the fabrics together and said, here, here's this fabric swatch, make me a shirt? I or? did, I did. I work with a tailor in Los Angeles who I've used before, so I know that we've been able to get the, the shirt right, so then I made the fabric and had them make the shirt for me. I love it.